Okay, time for the third and last part of this extra lecture on uh, Haskell type driven development. And um, we'll head over to Emacs as usual. So, um, as I mentioned in the first and second parts, I'm implementing some prelude functions. So then I'm hiding those functions when I'm importing the prelude to avoid clashes. So um, uh, in this part, I'm going to talk about some types, and I have talked about product types, which is the pair type, uh, Cartesian product, and the sum type here is uh, comparable to disjoint union or set union. You have two types, A and B, and you want a value which is either of one type or of the other type, and you can't quite uh, decide beforehand which one it is, so you want a type which fits both. So um, the definition uh, is parameterized over two type parameters A and B, and uh, it has two possibilities. Either we go to the left and take a value A and embed it as an either A, B, or we go to the right and take a value of type B and embed it as a value of type either, either AB. So example values, um, an either value one could be left I, and an either value two could be right, oops, right of false. And uh, the either value one here has type either string, whoops, string, and actually A, any A would do. And the either value two, two has type either, either A and bool. Maybe I should say string B here to not confuse matters. So in one case, we know what the left uh, we know that the left part is a string, but we have no clue what the right part is because it's any value of an either type is either the left or the right. It can't be both. So we, we are not constraining the other value, uh, but we could have, for example, a list of these values. Um, if we say list example one uh, is a list which contains either value one and either value two. And uh, then we can ask ourselves, what is the type of this? Well, it's a, it's a list. It's a list of either values. So either something, something. And we know from either one that the first thing has to be a string. And we know from either two that the second thing has to be bool. So both either one, i1 and i2 are polymorphic. But when they are used here, they are suddenly have to decide and be uh, of the same instance of the either type. So let's look at this, L1. Well, L1 is just a list here because we have not told it how to print it. But if we say deriving show, deriving show, then we can actually also look at the values. Left high, right false. So this is a, a way of handling the strong types in Haskell, which maybe in Python or so, you could have a list um, with different types and the different positions. But here you have to be, if you want to have a string and a bool in the same list, you have to make sure to embed them in an either type. Okay, so the either type and its use uh, has been given. And now we have a function called either with a small e. So it has an interesting type. Uh, as before, I will um, I will sort of just start first abstract a bit and say what what, what do we have here? Well, we have a, an arg a function taking one and two arguments and returning something. So we can say either takes f and g, and then becomes some kind of a right hand side, where right hand side if we go one step further, actually is also function type. So if the right hand side is also a function type, then I will choose to define 
right hand side with adding an extra argument here, an e. So now suddenly the right hand side is not an either a, b to r, but just an r, but we have e of the remaining type. So either now can be seen as I've sort of expanded our knowledge a bit. It is actually a function arrow here as well. And I, well, I can insert the R. Um, so it actually, we see now that it has one, two, three arguments. We can always view a Haskell function as having one argument, or if it returns a function having two, or if that function in turn returns a function having three arguments and so on. So here it has three arguments. So we add F, G, and E as patterns. Okay, so now this cannot be loaded, right hand side is not defined, but I will uh, refine it a bit further. And now is the first time when I will use pattern matching with two cases. So we have E here of type either AB, and that can be one of two possibilities. So I will copy this line, and then I will replace E in one case by left X, and the other case by right y. So now we we know that um, uh, left x is of this type and right y is also of this type. And that in turn means that x is, whoops, is of type A and that y is of type B. So X is the thing in the first component, Y is the thing in the second component, the left or right components. Okay, now we're getting closer and to make sure that we don't do too much before we type check, I will add some right hand sides which can be uh, parsed type checked here. And yes, we have a function a sort of syntactically and type-wise correct definition, but of course it doesn't do anything useful yet. Oops, I should actually close this one. Okay, um, if we have a left x in our hand, what can we do here? Well, remember the right hand side of the whole thing is supposed to be of type R. And we have two functions producing Rs. We have an A to R, which is F, and we have a B to R, which is G. So in this case, we want to use F, which goes from A to R, because we have an X where F can be applied to. And similarly, there's not much choice in the other case. We have G, which goes from B to R, and we have, let's match that up with down here, um, with the y of type b. So in this case, we basically can only do g of y. So we're taking two functions, and in one case we use f, in the other case we use y. And here, as g is never used, it could be actually useful to show the reader that we have not sort of forgotten about it, we really didn't want to use it. And similarly here, we have f and g, and in one case we ignore g, in another case we ignore f. So this is an example of a function which now, let's see, not only type correct is type correct, but also should be possible to run. But to run it, we need some example inputs. So we got e1 and e2 for the third argument of either, but we also need functions. So E1 here was a left high, so it has a string. We need a function from string. Um, so there is, um, let's see, um, S takes string to, well, let's be boring here, string to string, S of, well, let's, let's call it D for double. Um, and it takes an S to S plus plus S. So uh, then we have a function that can be used for the first component in the either, and then we want the function to use both for the second component, the bool. Um, well, we can use not, for example. 
so we don't have to define our own function here. Um, so I'll just put a, a comment here, not as type. Well, actually not is not going to be very good. Not could be used uh, in general to apply to the second component, but we need something which also returns a string. Um, so actually let's, um, let's use show. Um, so the show function can show it almost well, most things. So there is a show function of types pool to string. So now we have uh, a function from bool to string and we have a function from string to string. And why both to string? Well, because we need the R here to be the same and the same to be produced in the end. Okay, so now we should be able to test either uh, TE for test either, TE1 perhaps, should apply the either function to um, D and show and EI1. Okay, now it doesn't like this. Uh, ambiguous type variable, it doesn't quite know. So let's, let's see what we wanted this to be. We claimed that we would actually produce a string and um, ah okay um, the, the problem here it's it's an interesting problem it's a bit annoying the problem is that our function show is polymorphic it says down here in the in the hint that it can work for any type a which is showable so let's make our own uh, show b show b is implemented as show but it is a specific version of show um, which um, let's ignore not here which only works for bool and then we use show b here and then it doesn't complain so the problem was that as the i1 value doesn't actually have a right component a is completely polymorphic and it couldn't possibly know what type to choose and it um, the Haskell interpreter does not know that I would actually never need it. So now we have fixed show B to the bool version. Uh, it could have been shown fixed to some other type, but just any type. And now we can combine it to use it. So what is then TE1? High, high. Yes, because this is left high. Okay, and what about the corresponding value TE2? which is used as EI2, and that's false. So false as a string. Notice here the type of TE2 is a string, while the bool in here, false, is of type bool. Okay, so we define the either function, uh, which I should fit on the screen yes and if I erase some of this stuff I can see its type as well so we define an either function which is rather general uh, it takes two functions what to do if we got an a what to do if we got a b and combines them into uh, do something reasonable if we got an a or a b we don't know if we're going to get an a or a b therefore we need both functions and uh, that concludes this uh, third part and I hope you've got some more learning on the Haskell side and exercises you can do for yourself. Thanks.